All right, Valley Ocon, let's do this. Woo. All right, there's Dan. Hey, I don't have a mic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Dan Petty. I'm a creative director at an agency called Wayno in San Francisco. I'm also a vlogger. Sorry, this is weird. Um, I'm going to ask my buddy uh, Anthony to come vlog takeover for me. Thank you. Um, so this talk is super quick. It's actually not really a talk. It's an AMA. You can ask me anything. Does anyone have a question for me? Can you share your life story? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My whole life story? I'm 33, so that's why it take a while. How you became a designer? How I became a designer. Okay, I'll make it quick. So I became a designer um, when I was like 16 because, so like I said, I'm 33 now, I'm really old. But when I was 16, um, I really wanted to start a business. I was really into uh, <laughs> cars that, you know, with body kits and weird paint jobs and spoilers and wheels and things that make them jump up and down. Um, and I wanted to create a website, uh, an online magazine basically. Like there wasn't really anything back in the day. So I wanted to create one. So I knew developers, but I knew no designers and I had no money to pay for it. So my mom was a teacher, had Photoshop. I went to her school, started playing around and then I started, you know, just making a bunch of stuff, went to school for it, and still to this day I'm designing. So, short story, but that's how I got started. All right, let's go deeper. <coughs> Are you drawing? I am. Can you do this? All of these. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's in there. So, I was wondering if you could tell us why you started Evercurrents. I needed a reason to go snowboarding and take off of work. <laughs> and, uh... I was working full time, you know, Monday through Friday. I couldn't go snowboarding. I needed an excuse. And my excuse was to start a little gathering. It was supposed to be like five to 10 people um, and just to go snowboarding for like two days and uh, during the week. And then it turned into an event to give us an excuse because our bosses weren't already letting us off just for asking. So I was like, all right, let's make it official. So this is a conference now. Uh, we have 10 people. So we have an excuse to go snowboarding, and then it turned into 55 people, and just we, and we had fun, so we decided to continue it. But it really just started, honestly, as an excuse to get off work to go snowboarding. And that's why it's still during the week, so we can all get off work. So you have a pretty open and transparent life through your blog, and which I really appreciate. What's uh, the best and worst thing that has come out of that? Out of the blog? Yeah, to be so transparent and so open with. The, the good the benefit is a lot of younger designers have reached out to me. A lot of people wanting to know what it's like to be in San Francisco as a designer, like they're, you know, whether they're afraid of it or whatever, they can see what it's like a little bit. And that's actually the whole point for doing it. I want to show people what it's like to be a designer in San Francisco because, I don't know, some people have different pros and cons to that, but it's actually a lot of fun. So. I want to show that side, show how easy it is to just go have conversations with people. It takes me like three to four hours to edit each one. I try to put one up every day um, just to edit. I'm not talking about filming. I still full time at Wayno in San Francisco. I still freelance full time in the mornings and at night. And I have two little girls and a wife and I mean the whole thing. So it's, it's exhausting, <laughs> uh, but it's, I mean, I'm growing like crazy uh, just personally out of that. So. Where'd the light go? It's right here, bro. Oh. <laughs> like the board chained up over here. All right, so Epicurrence. People love it, people hate it. Obviously, you started Whoa. it. Oh, well, people love it. People love it. All right, sorry, my bad. All right, so obviously, for anybody that's gone, it's had a big impact on them. I'm, I'm curious to hear from you as the host. You started it as this one thing. It's totally just blown up. What impact has that had on you? Uh, okay, good question. First of all, it's not as cool as Valley of Con. Valley of the best conference in the world. So, what impact has it had on me? It's honestly allowed me to be more open and have better conversations with people. Like, I'm a total introvert. Um, I'm super quiet, super shy. And you could ask Louisa, who works with me. Like, I probably don't ever talk in the office. I can just kind of in my little zone. Uh, but after doing Epicurrence, 
I just felt like I'm more, like I could do this a lot easier, you know? Like I would usually be shaking like crazy right now or whatever, but I don't, it's just, it's helped me grow personally to be a more outgoing person uh, and to have conversations with people a little bit more and things like that. So I mean, that's actually one of the greatest benefits for me, that and all the relationships you get, of course. But personally, you know, it's just, it's, it's growing. It's helping me grow. Like we should constantly, you know, be growing, learning, whatever it is. And that's my way of doing that. Because that was my biggest weakness, is communication skills and uh, just being open to people. So that's helped a lot. Let's go harder. Come on. I think you're pretty good at a lot of stuff, like, throughout your career. Like, I'll pay you later, thank you. What's that? I'll pay you later for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. But y you've been good at photography and web design and lots of different stuff, right? Now, it looks like you're pretty good at editing video, uh, throwing a conference, a lot of stuff. What are you, what do you, what do you personally think that you're not good at and what do you want to do better? Uh, well, thank you for the nice words, I appreciate that. I don't believe you, but I appreciate that, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm terrible at a lot of things. Uh, like I just said, one of my biggest weaknesses is communication. Um, I'm by far not the smartest person in any room. In school, I couldn't really read and still don't ever read to this day. So, I mean, Things like that are, are definitely things I'm bad at and I really want to be good at, which is why I started blogging, Epic Currents and all these things, because I, I want to grow in that area so bad. Like, I have two little girls now, and I want to be able to like, talk to her friend's parents and all this stuff, but I struggle with that stuff like crazy. Even like pitching design work, I still struggle with it, even though that should be my biggest strength, right? I've been doing this for so long. I am so nervous every time I have to do that, but after I started at the Currents, and after I had my two little girls, and just started being more open, I've just kind of grown in that area. Um, but ever since I started designing, just communication has been my weakest thing for sure. Of course you guys are Ooh. Gross. Uh, all right, so um, I had the pleasure to go to the second one, right? Um, Hawaii. Awesome. Um, so oh. the thing, oh, did I say that one? Sorry. Sorry. Oh yeah, I learned, I learned that from you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. So um, you know, it was awesome, and I think that you know, you're really like everyone's inspired by that, and everyone wants to go, and you know, it's getting it was exclusive, and it's, it's still exclusive, and all of that. There were some tweets that there was potentially you know really no like more epic currents. Okay. You know, and so uh, all I'm asking is, you know, essentially, um, is everything, you know, figured out? Most conferences, uh, we, we don't make money, you know, we actually spend a lot of money, we lose a lot of money. I lost a lot of my, I lost, on the last two Epic Currences, uh, I lost my entire life savings. Uh, literally, I paid to do this conference. Everything I had. I almost had to sell my cars, um, everything. Um, the, you know, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff went into it. I won't go too, too much deeper, but, uh, um, so there wasn't going to be another one because of that, and there wasn't going to be another one because a lot of people, uh, rightfully so, were complaining about the diversity of my events, the price of my events, I mean, all kinds of things. There's a, there's a lot to com complain about. So um, I've been trying each time to get better at those, even though I jacked up the price for this one, this next one that I launched, uh, announced. <laughs> Um, but diversity was something that I really tried hard on, and I think we improved on it on the last one. Were you in Montus? Was anyone here at the Montus? Yes. How was diversity? It was, yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was good. It's getting there. Okay, getting there. See, yeah. they did, they did get there. So it's something, I mean, it's, it's challenging, uh, but it's something I've been working on. So that was another reason why I wanted to quit, because people, you know, I was making people upset, and that's the last thing I want to do. Um, I mean, because I'm, I'm doing this for relationships. I'm not doing this clearly to make money. Um, so for relationships, and when those kind of you know die down, it's I don't want to do it anymore. It's not exciting. Mm -hmm. Conferences like Valio and Evercurrents is like the community really is behind you if you're putting your heart out into it, like Drew does and I do. Um, the, the community will back you. I mean, because we, we do this stuff for you guys, right? And this has nothing to do with me or him. It's for all you and everyone else kind of watching from the sidelines. But, yeah. Anybody else? Was something harder? Can you get spe more specific about the diversity issues? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you ask hard. Probably like 
50% white male, um, and then probably 20% white or 30% white female, and then it just gets even smaller and smaller from there. Um, like there's, there's, there hasn't been a strong diversity, a racial divide, even gender divide, until the Montuse, when I specifically tried to make it like even on every single thing, which was impossible in a way. Uh, it was a huge challenge, but it was the most diverse um, event that I had. So freelancing all this time, you get to be really picky and choosy about like, who you work with, brands you like, people you're stoked on. And then going to somewhere like Wayno, you might start having to work on projects that you maybe aren't stoked on, or unless Wayno's really good at you know, mitigating that. I'm just wondering how you handle situations where you know, you're, you're the designer with availability, therefore you're on the project, and how do you navigate that? Um, yeah, so thankfully Wayno is one of the best agencies, if not the best, right now. Um, I'm actually the worst designer there, so I, that's the truth, um, but, um, and the oldest, probably, gosh. Um, but luckily, you know, we work on projects like Boosted Boards, so we just launched our website on Thursday, so I haven't really ran into that issue yet of, at an agency like Lano, of having a project that I don't want to work on, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, if I did, I think, I mean, even in freelance, sometimes I get those projects where, uh, sadly, I work on them for the money. Um, it doesn't happen often, but it does happen a lot. Sometimes you need money and you take projects. I think it's just part of the business. I think you have to do that sometimes. Obviously, if you're doing that full time, that's, I don't think that's okay. I, I think that's bad for you. Um, but uh, sometimes you have to. I mean, sometimes it is about a paycheck sometimes. But don't let it be about a paycheck. All the time. Did we lose the mic? Yeah. Oh. Is Wayno you, your first full, first full time gig? You're, you've done a lot of freelance, right? So. Yeah, I've done a lot of freelance, but uh, Wayno is my first. Well, so I was at Lux Valley a startup in San Francisco. It's my first time I've ever been at a job for a year. Okay. Uh, I've been designing for you know 11 years now or so. Um, first time I've ever been anywhere for a year. Um, but now Wayno, I've been there for. Or, Three months or so, something like that. But not even three months, I think. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean. So what, what made you decide to make that switch? Or like what was the things you were worried about that didn't really matter at all anyway? Uh, well, for me, so I love freelance. I, I always want to be a freelancer. The uh, reason I went full time was strictly financially. Uh, like I said, I just got done spending my entire life savings on Epic Currents and I needed some money and I needed some steady money because I have a family um, and you know I shopped around for a little bit and we know being the best agency I wanted to be a part of that so that's why I'm there right now uh, but for a lot I mean a lot of my friends are there too it's a, seriously the most fun place to work so that's it was a no-brainer for me come on we gotta get the tears Um, do you ever work with um, remote clients, or what is your relationship with building a client base if you aren't working in the same city? Yeah, um, great question. Uh, a lot of my clients are remote when I freelance, and even though they're still in San Francisco, I still never go in their office. I don't like to use Slack, I don't like to use email, I don't like to use any of these other fancy things. I, I don't even do phone calls, to be honest. <laughs> Because uh, I hate to talk. I'm not a good communicator. Uh, I do text. So if I have a client, no matter who they are, how big they are, we're texting constantly. And I see it immediately, you know, because I treat my clients as something serious, so I see it immediately. And I also think, I think of my clients as friends. I want them as friends. And I feel like texting is the most intimate you could be without having phone calls. I mean, phone calls still can be too businessy. But if you could just text anyone, like even just super loose text, you almost immediately become friends in a way. And I, th I always treat my clients that way. So I always prefer text messages over anything. So um, I'm kind of curious what exactly you do at Wayno. Um, uh, I saw. I, <laughs> what do I do? Like, like, uh, and I, as a creative director, like, what does that mean at Wayno? Like, I saw on your blog that you're working at the computer and just like any other designer. I'm curious, like, what does that have any meaning for you? Uh, what, what does the. What does that role like look like at Wayno? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that term creative director, art director, whatever it is, has, has uh, 
definitely changed a lot over the years. Um, so I, my background is traditional advertising agency, where creative directors actually like do concepting, come up with ideas. Uh, they don't, they, they still design, but they're usually the guys kind of just, you know, not leading a project, but helping just there to like give ideas and whatnot, good, good copywriting ideas, design ideas, or whatever it is. So when I was in school, you know, my first goal was to be an art director. My next goal was to be a creative director. And I, other than that, it's like your own agency, right? Um, so I still have that mentality today just because it was my dream when I got started. So um, being the creative director at, at Wayno uh, is a little bit different because we're all basically on the same playing field. Um, we're all just designers. And like I said earlier, I'm the worst designer there and probably have the worst ideas there because uh, those guys are crazy talented. But um, for me, uh, it's still just like I'm there to do concepts. So whenever we get a big project, I'm there to just kind of help with concepts and you know help the other guys that are designing give a few ideas here and there, even though they don't need them because they're crazy. Um, but that's kind of the role of a creative director in, in just in general. We're just kind of there to help with ideas and stuff. But at Wayno, I'm still designing. I actually do, still do production design and all kinds of stuff. That's usually a role of creative director. It's, it's kind of skewed these days, though, with all the startups and everything going on. Like People just throw that term out there. It, it's kind of meaningless now. Uh, all titles are, really. You want to get real? Yeah. I got a question that's maybe a little more real. Okay. Can you tell, and I think the reason behind this question is because it's really easy to take an example of what went well, right? That's kind of something we put out all the time. And a good way to learn is from a mistake. So yeah. what's the biggest time you ever blew it? The biggest one. So many. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so many. Well, just one example that comes to mind, uh, though this is not the biggest one, it's the first one that comes to mind. Uh, as a freelancer, I don't do contracts. I don't do agreements. I'm super loosey-goosey. I just like, yeah, you want to do a site? Dude, let's do it. You, you, you pay me, right, eventually. I don't ask for half up front, whatever. I don't ask for anything. I just start designing. And we just get this relationship going. That's why I say like, the relationship is the most important thing for me. I don't want to contract for a relationship. It's just weird to me. Um, don't follow this advice by any means. I just, <laughs> uh, it's only not worked once for me. If I could do it over again, I would focus more on the business side of stuff. Um, At RG, can we talk about your Twitter handle? Sure. <laughs> okay, is it RGB? Please. please. Or R, like red, green, blue? Uh -huh. Or is it like RGB? RGB. Okay, what's RGB? It's supposed to be RGB. So confusing. <laughs> <laughs> you, rem you remembered it. No, I love it. Yeah, there you go. Um, so going back to what you just kind of finished that last one with, um, a lot of people talk about work-life balance, and that means like a lot of things to a lot of different people. Um, and then it should mean something different to everyone. How, how do you kind of manage that? Obviously you said you were hospitalized and you should stop, but something keeps going because you have passion or money or whatever it is. Like, what is that for you? I think the biggest secret that I learned from doing all this stuff and getting you know, health issues and whatnot, but being able to continue is Stop caring about, you know, not stop caring about myself, but start caring about like, oh, I want to have this big career and all this stuff, make all this money. Uh, I just want to have a good life. Um, and once I got in that mindset and stopped caring about, you know, making millions of dollars and being a really well-known person or whatever, and successful startups, I felt that this stress just went away. Like I have no pressure on myself right now, nothing. The, I, my only pressure is to provide for my family. That's it, and that's a big pressure. But I had like, oh, I have to, buy, by the time I'm 30, I need a million dollars. I'm 33 now. We we'll won't talk about if I hit that or not. But, um, you know, I had all these goals and pressures that I was constantly putting on myself. And once I got rid of that, it just, my work-life balance just made sense. To live a good life? Yeah, like what is a good life mean? Ooh. Having a happy family, I think. Being, being happy myself. Um, and uh, I think once my mindset changed, I definitely became a happier person. Um, and once I started putting more focus on my family, um, definitely became a happier person. So I think a good life for me is having, you know, 
a healthy family, happy family, you know, being there for them, being there for my wife and everything, being known as that first, and then I'd have an incredible life. As long as I can keep surfing and stuff on the side too, you know, that'd be fun. Um, so I think the format of this has been really interesting and different for, for us to experience this. Good. Um, but I'm curious, what is like the big thing you want us to take away from you talking to us? Whatever questions you guys ask, I would want you guys to get out of it. You know, I hope, I guess, I hope you guys understand that, you know, we're all designers, developers, or whatever. Are there developers in here? Designer developers in here. Should designers code, raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> if you got anything out of this, um, I think just understanding that, uh, you know, even though we work a lot, it's not the most important thing that we do. Um, sure, it pays the bills or whatever, but um, I think you guys just need to, if you learn anything from me, don't, don't overwork yourself. Don't put it as the number one thing in this world. Like, there's so many more important things. Than making money and like a tons of money, but uh, y'all gotta laugh. I'm serious. <laughs> you like I want money. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think uh, you know. Don't don't overwork yourself and you just have fun. And don't take don't take our jobs too seriously. We're not on a pedestal. We're just people, just working. Do things outside of work. Don't work too hard. Uh, get up from your desk don't just sit down all day for all these hours that we work constantly or you'll end up in the hospital like me over and over again um and still i still have health issues today because of that and i always will just because i thought work was everything so hopefully someone gets that at least one person but Subscribe. <laughs> Thank you, whoever said that. Yo, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. You are all on the vlog, so you have to. <laughs> yes. One, two, three. Like and subscribe. <laughs>